So welcome back to PySpark, and this section is about big data cleaning and wrangling with Spark Notebooks. This section is very easy. We're going to use Spark Notebooks for some quick iteration of ideas, do some sampling and filtering of RDDs to pick out relevant data points, and then splitting some data sets and creating some new combinations. Let's first look at Spark Notebooks. So this video is very simple. I'm just going to go over a quick way of how we can set up a Jupyter Notebook-like environment for Spark. So you hear a lot of people talk about Spark Notebooks and throw this term around, and what is it actually? If we Google Spark Notebook, then it's very easy. We can see that Spark Notebook is just interactive and reactive data science environment using Scala and Spark. So if we go to the GitHub page, what the notebook does is actually very straightforward. It's an open source notebook aimed at enterprise environments, providing data scientists and data engineers with an interactive web-based editor that can combine Scala code, SQL queries, markup, and JavaScript in a collaborative manner to explore, analyze, and learn from massive data sets. If we look at a screenshot of what Spark Notebooks look like. They do look very much like what us Python developers are used to, which is namely Jupyter Notebooks. You basically have a bit of text box allowing you to enter some code and executing the code below the text box in a very notebooks-like format. So this allows us to do reproducible analysis with Apache Spark and the big data ecosystem. So all of the benefits that we've heard about in Jupyter Notebooks already. So you can use Spark Notebooks as is, and all we need to do is go to the Spark Notebook website to get this started. After the page loads, we can see that all we need to do is to make sure that we're running Java 7. And if we go into sparknotebook.io, which is the main website for Spark Notebook, we can see that there is a bunch of options we can do. We can download this tar file and unzip it. But if you're like me and you're used to using Python, and this is a course about PySpark, there shouldn't be any sort of funny business concerning Scala. A different language and also like we already know how to use Jupyter Notebooks and Python there's really no reason to steer away from using Jupyter Notebooks. In addition if you're like me you're probably using Windows and WinPython or Anaconda to interface with your normal Python day-to-day -day work and you just want to like kind of like get set up with PySpark with the minimal amount of effort. So downloading this Spark Notebook that is based off Scala and needing to learn a completely new ecosystem is really not ideal. And especially it doesn't work really well in Windows at the moment. So I'm sure this is a great piece of software and the authors are really trying their best to fix the set of issues with Windows. But the truth to be told is I've tried this as I'm recording this and this doesn't really work for Windows. Fortunately, there's a quick way for us to do the same thing in Jupyter Notebooks. So we go back into our Jupyter environment, and if we look at the PySpark accompanying code files, we can quickly see that there is a Chapter 3 notebook. And in the Chapter 3 notebook, I've included a convenient way for you to set up your environment variables to get PySpark working with Jupyter. So the thing that you need to do is to create two new environment variables in your environment. If you're in Linux, you can use this in bash RC. If you're like me in Windows, all you need to do is to change and edit your system environment variables. Lots of tutorials online on how to do that. In particular, what you want to do is in edit or include the PySpark underscore driver underscore Python variable and point this to your Jupyter Notebook installation. So if you're on Anaconda, 
you'll probably be pointing it to the Anaconda Jupyter bash file. I'm on WinPython, so I pointed it to my WinPython Jupyter Notebook bash file. And here, the second environment variable that you want to export is simply PySpark underscore driver underscore Python underscore ops, standing for options. And one of the suggestions that I've found is we include in the options the notebook folder, the notebook app, telling it to not open the browser, telling it what port to bind to. In practice, what I found is if you're on Windows and you're on the WinPython environment, then you don't really need this line here and you can simply skip it. After you've done this, then simply restart your PySpark from your command line. And what would happen is instead of having the console that we've seen before, we actually launch directly into a Jupyter Notebook instance. And furthermore, we can use Spark and SC variables like before in Jupyter Notebook. So let's test it out. And great, we instantly get access to our Spark context. It tells us that our Spark is version 2.3.2. We, our master is at loco and the app name is the Python Spark shell. So that's set up great. And that's how we create a notebook like environment in Jupyter.